But I do want to say this. I want to welcome all of those by the telephone. We always thank yes. God for you that are on the telephone because that's how we started uh, the Prophetic Pulse. And we greet all of you that are uh, watching around the world by the various means of social media. And like Pastor Matt said, you want to make sure that you have a backup plan should your social media begin to have uh, glitches um, that uh, are part of China and others. <laughs> no, I'm teasing, but uh, just make sure you go to onevoicetv.net. That is our network, and I'm telling you, you won't find those glitches or censoring. All right, hey, listen, I really want to get into it tonight. We've got a lot of material, and I'm not going to even kind of go the teachy, instructive route. I want to get right into the prophetic words because a lot of things are coming to pass. Yes. And what we have to understand in this time, and those of you that are watching, is this: there is something different. It, it, it has shifted. I can, I can feel it. You know, how many of you were able to watch uh, Flashpoint on Monday night and Tuesday? Well, thank you. I That's love awesome. that you're wearing the hat. And, uh, you know, God has told me to add Mondays for a while. I don't know how long. I'm just trying to be obedient. But it was interesting because uh, didn't Lance do a great job last night, too? So uh, I called him after the show, and I said, Lance, you did a great job. You can host uh, in my stay all the time when Pastor Gene is gone. But anyway, they, um, we had technical difficulties the last time I did it. Most people don't know that. We had like 30 seconds before I had to go live. And I'm like, ah, you know, everything was going apart. But Lance did a great job. But he is going to be here May, what is it, 19th? Pentecost uh, Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. So it's going to be great to have him. And uh, we were talking last night just about, you know, how he can sense it as well. There is something that is happening, you can feel it in the air. And yes. I, I'm so happy because, yes. you know, I pray for you every day. And those of you that are watching and listening, you know, it, it's every day we pray, pray for you. And one thing I keep saying to God, God, you're lifting the harshness off of the people. And that is most important to God's heart. But it's important to my heart, too, is that you uh, see that things are going to begin to go to a better place. Now, it doesn't yes. mean that evil is going to disappear. So let's get right into things tonight. I want to start off with Psalm 89, and I want to look at verse 14, because this is kind of the basis of the first thing that we're going to talk about when it comes to what is God saying? What, how, why are we convinced that there's, you know, any kind of shift that is happening right now on the earth? And I uh, want to, to look at the scripture, and I'm going to introduce our panel here says justice and judgment. Really, the translation is righteousness and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. So this is what God is saying to us right now. He is giving us an opportunity to stand strong and to really invoke his justice. And when we do, we will see that mercy will triumph over any judgment. That's why we've got to stay strong in these imprecatory prayers. I was studying all day today. And God was taking me directions. I cannot wait to preach on Sunday. Uh, it's going to be very powerful. But I just want to introduce also with us, I have yep. my beautiful wife, Brenda, uh, with us, as well as Terry. Uh, yes. you, you grew up in the church. I did. Nine years old. Nine years Sorry, old. Sorry, wow. coming here. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know, 16 now. <laughs> Which I want to say, with Terry, yeah. I'll mention the Game Changer guys in a minute, but... Um, we're beginning to do some daily decrees for government together. Yes, and yes. so I'm telling you, be looking. It's powerful, powerful, powerful. So. And Terry has uh, legal um, uh, experience. Uh, you went to school for that. Political science. Political so, science. Yep, I went to school yeah. for political science, yeah. took several courses in constitutional law. Wow. So, yep. so she's brilliant. She works for the church. She also used to work for the mayor's office for many years. And we really have a gem in her. And, of course, we have Pastor Matt and Anthony. The game changers game of Lord changers. of Hosts. And it's no, I, I'm just going to make something public, and it's okay. He soon will be moving into the pastoral calling on his life. We're just waiting on the right timing. How many can already see it on his life? I mean, it's very obvious. So uh, if you look at his, if he would stand up. Um, you would see that he has holes in his knees because he has really been praying, man. So, yeah. so it's, it's all right. These are my holy jeans. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, back in the olden days, we used to put patches over them. But well, I'll, I'll talk to you about that. It'll be part of your ministerial training. All right. Well, let's get into the first prophecy. This was um, December 31st 
of 2023. Now, we want to set this up, and it would be great, great if I don't have to wear my glasses, um, but I want to set this one up because this is an interesting thing that God said, and then what I'm going to ask you to do, uh, the panel here, I'm going to ask you, Terry, with your political uh, science um, understanding, I want you to talk about some of the language that's in this prophecy, but we're going to start off, all right, this was December 31st, of 2023 so this was our new year's eve service listen to what god says are you ready it says 2024 you've entered into a new time now so it would be upon your calendar but pay attention says the spirit of god to 24 because this is a governmental year and it's not just a governmental year concerning politics but it's a governmental year concerning the court of heaven my court, my justice, my righteousness that has come into the earth in 2024. And seated with me in the court of heaven are the 24 elders of the Lamb. And they sit here this year of 24 because of the governmental shift that is coming to the earth that will affect nations, leaders, politics, legislation, justice, and judges. For the 24 elders have held the prayers of a remnant people in their hands. And the eternal advocate, Yeshua, has stood among the 24 elders, gathering the prayers of those who have prayed. Now, when that came out of my mouth, I didn't even remember that prophecy. And when Amy, our, my assistant after, I think she's been with us like 25 years, transcribed, I, I read that and I went, that is crazy. And the Spirit of God said to me, he said, go look up the 24 elders in Scripture. And so I did, and I found the references that were in the book of Revelation. And even in Revelation 5, verse 8, it says that they are, they are literally holding in their hands the incense, which are the prayers of God's people. So I thought, okay, well, at least it's biblical. You know, um, so this is important. So let's talk about this. And, and uh, I want to go now to, to slide 2. And this is where I want you, Terry, to comment after this. It says, slide two, watch this. This is a continuation of the prophecy. Therefore, we, God saying the court of heaven, have reached a verdict at this time. That we have reached this verdict, and it shall be the entering in of the rest that I've said to you. I'll rest my case. Therefore, I will involve myself with your politics. I'll involve myself, and there will be a scattering, and there will be a gathering. There will be changes that are different than what you see now. And they will say that, uh, and then they will say, this is what represents us. And God says, I will disrupt, I will interrupt, I will disappoint, but I will reach my satisfaction. Now notice what God's telling us to do. Pray, 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 says the Spirit of God. For there are those who have sought in times past to bring about hostility, harassment, harshness, to think that they can bring about a stealing of your freedoms. So we're going to continue to pray. We're yes. Going to bust the teeth out of the wicked, Amen. right? The wicked Amen. spirits and what they're doing. Amen. So notice God said there's a verdict. And he used the term resting his case. Okay. You know, I don't know what those words, you know, really mean. So can you tell us what is God saying? Yeah, I, I find it really interesting that God used those specific terms. So I went and looked up in Black's Law Dictionary, and it's a really commonly used dictionary uh, for legal definitions. And I first wanted to look up what, it, what does it mean to rest your case? You know, we hear that a lot in TV and things like that, but you know, what does it actually mean? And it talks about at the end of a trial, when the, when the party says to rest their case, that is when Everything has been put forward, and they have finished bringing forward any new evidence or rebutting any evidence that has been brought from the other side. Which I found interesting. So essentially, you know, we're not bringing any forward new evidence. Nothing new is coming forward. We're done making the arguments. We're done having the, the discussion. And the, there's nothing left to prove. We've said all that we can say. We are arresting our case. So then I went to verdict because I'm like, okay, interesting. So again, still Black Law's dictionary here in verdict. And essentially, verdict is the formal and unanimous decision or the finding of the jury. And so for just to kind of explain a little bit of that legal process, when you think about it, after they've rested their case, all, both sides have stopped giving arguments and giving evidence, the jury will go back and deliberate. 
and we'll take that evidence, look over it, and decide what that verdict will be. And then they will come back, and then they will announce that the verdict of the ju jury is guilty or not guilty. But one thing I want to point out that's really interesting here, Pastor, is that even after that verdict, there's normally a, a time between the verdict and the sentencing. There's a, t there's a different time. That doesn't typically happen at the same time. There's normally a space and time there that they'll come back and then they'll actually pronounce the sentence of whatever that punishment is. And so that's important. I found it interesting that after God said in that prophecy about the verdict, that he then said to pray. Because that, that legal process well, isn't a done yet. timing. I think that's the key. Yes. Is, and I, I just feel like that's super important. I think what we struggle with sometimes as the body of Christ is the timing. You know, we think things should just be, but God has a timing. So exactly. I'm so glad you said that because that gives hope to people that if you don't see an immediate, you know, outcome, it's God renders a verdict, but then there's a timing on when the sentence is carried out. Exactly. It's amazing. Are any of you guys want to say anything on this real quick before we go to the next one? Okay, let's go to the next one, <laughs> slide three. This is the continuation of that same word. God says they gather now, and he's talking about the enemy and, and those that, you know, we know who they are. And, they, and they're losing their grip. They're losing their power. They're losing their way. And God says they gather and they say, what must we do now? It's not working. Now, if you listen to the fake news, uh, they'll tell you something different. And they will seek to bring civil unrest to the cities upon this nation, United States. And they will seek to cause chaos to happen. You must pray. So, Janet, you and the prayer team, you know what to do. And they shall seek to allow those who have come into your country to wound you and bring this nation into a time of war. And then I like what the last part of this prophecy says. If you look at it in the red, it says, but do you think? Well, God says there'll be wars and rumors uh, and there'll be fires that will arise here and there. But do you think this will stop the verdict that has been declared and now decreed in the earth by the great God the elder, and even the elders and the eternal advocate. Do you think that this is the end of all things I say to you? All right, go to slide four. He continues. He said, listen, I said I would give the harvest to my son, the greatest harvest. This is why, I don't know, when people get on and they start trying to connect all the dots to Gog, Meg, Gog at the time of eggnog. And they pontificate, you know, uh, like last night, you know, there's this new brain thing that they came out with. Must be, you know, uh, the Antichrist. Well, they thought that when they were scanning your cereal box. Okay. It's true. And Chuck E. Cheese, and Chuck e. Cheese yep. came out with numbering your kids with the glow in the dark number. And people quit going to Chuck E. Cheese, Right. You know, we get so crazy. Every You're, new technology seems yeah. to have a fear factor. Well, I remember, Brenda, in 1984, I begged God because the big thing was in 1984, Jesus was supposed to return. And then 88, there was 88 reasons this guy came out with that Jesus was going to return. And I begged God. I said, God, I just want to meet my wife. I want to get married, <laughs> man. You know, and I was only like 22, but it happened. God answered my prayer and held off the rapture. <laughs> I got married in 1989. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, thank you, Jesus. It's been 34 years, man. Okay, so you can, Matt, and you can pray that way too. Amen. <laughs> Hold it off, God. All right, now, uh, so the rapture's being held off by all the single people in the earth. Right? <laughs> okay, but look at slide four. It says, and this is the time, it is written in decrees that you shall see volcanoes. And he's telling us what to pay attention to. Volcanoes. The Vatican. Do you know the Vatican was just in the news a couple weeks ago? Yeah. And there's some serious stuff. Vacancies. That's interesting. Verdicts. Vindication. Victories. And vendetta. Okay, what's a vendetta? What's a vendetta? Like an offense. Right. Yeah. Grudge yeah, is another like way to say it. Okay. Okay. What does this mean? My justice shall rule at this time. Which can I add oh, yeah. one little thing? I just noted this and on that third slide, you know, I, I, I like to pay attention to things that we're to look for in mm -hmm. these prophetic words. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of a person, even when I go to the scripture, I like to dig out and needle out little things. And I did notice something, guys, that had said this, you know, last night on Flashpoint, the big topic has been the border. Mm -hmm. And um, it says here, you must pray, they will seek 
to allow those who have come into this country to wound you. So in other words, it shows that God is saying everything they're doing on this border is it's purposeful, it's intentional, um, and it's not because they just want to welcome you know, people who are looking for a better life. That's yeah. not the intent. Now, that doesn't mean that people wouldn't come here that have good intentions, but what it is saying is the purpose of these people is to seek, to allow, to me, that's saying God is saying, ah, oh, you're trying to bring terrorists in the country, and that, you know what, we're going to bind that thief in Jesus' name. So I just noted that. So as we're saying these things, just know that God is exposing them all the time. So, Amen. And I think it's important, too, that when we hear these words that we need to do, what 1 Timothy 1.18 says, you wage a good warfare by That's the right. prophecies exactly. that have been given to you. Well, how do you do it? You pray them out. You decree them. You hold God to what he said. Okay? And when you do that, it says you'll hold faith and a good conscience. You won't get wigged out about stuff. And you also will avoid shipwreck. And the Bible is very clear in Jeremiah 29, 11. That's what prophecy does. It says, uh, I know the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of hope to give you a future. And watch this, an expected end. So when you listen to these prophetic words, and those of you that are watching and listening, it's important that you just, you, you, you look at the words of what is being said and then look at to the connecting promise. Because we're going to get into things about, you know, the wet snow that we saw, the freezing. We're going to talk about Texas. God prophesied about that too. But there's always something connected to what the outcome or what God is saying is going to happen. That's it's not good. just, you know, a predictive word. It's connected to a redemptive yes. plan, a plan of help, a plan of hope by God. All right, let's go to slide five. Any comments from you guys? Well, Go all ahead. I wanted to say, Pastor, is for those who have been tracking uh, Pastor's ministry for a while, this prophecy from December 31st, uh, where it says they will seek to bring civil unrest to the cities upon this nation, the United States, and they will seek to cause chaos. Does this sound eerily familiar to anyone else from 2019 when Pastor Hank prophesied about that very thing and what they would try to do with the... Yes, wow. And so I feel like this is our opportunity now to do what we were supposed to do then. And God has given us that opportunity in between the verdict yeah. and the sentencing to what? As it says in slide two, pray, pray, and pray. And if you'll notice in slide two where it says, and God says, I will disrupt, I will interrupt, and I will disappoint. Where those are three things that happen as a result, I believe, of pray, pray, pray. And if you notice, the other part, if we don't pray, 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 you will have hostility, harassment, and harshness. So this wow. is our opportunity. This is our second chance to get it right. And it's not one of those, like Pastor Hank was saying, where you just sit back and you're that saying, oh, that's a nice word. Anthony. But this is yes. our time to come in divine alignment Powerful. with what God has said. Come on. Yeah. You know, I, I, think, I think that was one of the things that were so many words about President Trump and what God's intent was. But then there was that August 20, how many remember the August 20 of 2020, um, where, where God began to speak and say, or maybe it was August 16th, either 16th or the 20th, for those that would remember, mm -hmm. through a chaotic, yep. planned yep. thing. And I wonder if we would have took that and really, really went yes. to yeah. imprecatory prayers yeah. of invoking the justice of God. And it's interesting because the word that I asked the Lord back in September, I said, what would you say? I said, God, just keep it very simple for me so I can tell the people. And he said to me, you tell the people to draw close to God this year like you've never mm -hmm. drew. And he That's said, it. what? Bind the thief. thief. Bind the thief. And so I think God's trying to tell us what to do so that no matter what they try, it isn't going to work. Yeah. And, and that's important. Okay, let's go on. Pastor, Jeff, can I add to that yeah. real quick? I think one thing that I would say, and it goes back to a conversation you and I had actually, um, is really right now, we as a people have got to decide what kind of court are we appealing to. Because everybody in America can say, well, I'm going to appeal to the Supreme Court. I'm going to go to the highest court. We need to be appealing to the court of heaven. That's where stuff gets done. Yes, okay, good. if we're appealing to the court of heaven, now we have heaven's blessing, 
heaven's ability now to make the, the, the ultimate decision absolutely. because that's where the power comes from. Yes. That's right. So we need to appeal to the right courts, absolutely, the right courtroom. Yes. And get That's heaven's important. rain in here, Very you know. Important. Everybody's talking on, you know, Fox and CNN and all these places about Supreme Court and we got to do this court case and that court case and I'm like no, if we're the body going of Christ, God. correct. <laughs> and that's where the church I think to dad's point made the mistake in the past is we, we were should too busy have, arguing, I think. Yeah. Or shutting churches down. Yeah. You know? Very powerful. Okay. Let's go on to slide five. And, and, and this is a continuation from uh, New Year's. And God says, because my justice is in the earth. Pay attention to judges who have thought that they could legislate according to briberies. Man, that is scary. Oh, yes. I will expose that there has been shaking of hands behind the scenes. You know what that does? It, it kind of explains why you see goofball rulings. Yeah, that's true. Or no court wanted to take the issue of the 2020 election. Right. And challenge right. anything. All right. So God says this. He continues. Therefore, pay attention as I involve myself. Now as the verdict is written across the things that will take place in this governmental year. Now he's telling you what his intent is. I will reset. I will remove. I will reverse. And I will require that the guilty be brought to justice. Come on. Yes, all right. Lord. So, all right. Now let's go to slide six. This is uh, January 14th. So this is just a few weeks ago. And God says this, and so it shall be, says the Spirit of God, that the season that you have entered into is a season of rest. But I say that I rest my case. Remember what Terry taught us? For the verdict has been decreed out of the mouth of the Holy One. Because of the elders who have gathered the prayers from the remnant people, and now my verdict has come in the earth, and I have come in no way to clear the guilty of what they have done. So quit saying out of your mouth and insulting God. You know, that's like anybody that tells you that you have to be sick. Anybody that tells you that God heals some and, and not others, or God is sovereign when it comes to healing. That's, that's like slapping Jesus back in his face like the Pharisees did. Because it's already been settled in heaven. You've already been healed according to Isaiah 53, 4, 1 Peter 2, 24. It's already settled. In the same way, when we say opposite of what God is declaring, God is saying, look, I'm going to deal with the justice. And sometimes we say, well, why aren't we seeing the justice? Because God chooses to operate in the earth by humankind. Yes. And when we are getting out of agreement with him, it binds up the court of heaven to be able to do certain things at the level that he wants to. So don't say, well, justice never happens. It seems like they constantly get away with it. Well, it might look that way, but I'm going to tell you something. And I know that I know that I know I've, ha I've been having too many interesting dreams. There is more going on than what you even want to think. Or that the news yeah, or, will talk or about. Or the news... The news is avoiding it on purpose, or they slide the word conspiracy in there because they really don't want you to believe the truth and what really is going on behind the scenes in a lot, I mean, many different areas. So you've got to stay the course. Keep your foot on the gas pedal. Continue to agree with what God said, not only have his holy word, but also but the also, prophetic Pastor word. But also, Pastor Hank, yeah. I think it's important not only keep your foot on the gas, know that there's yeah. things behind the scenes, but also focusing on what is out there that is happening. I mean, you, you know, we were talking, we did some daily decrees today. Um, some people, by the way, be watching the Game Changers are gonna, are gonna be appearing on Daily Decree Live, but uh, we just talked about the fact that there are so many areas where we're winning. There's so many areas that it is happening. It's very obvious things are coming to pass. And I think it's like anything in life, if you focus on what you think's not in your life, think about it. If you focus on how much money you think you don't have, you'll never see the God of provision. So it's the same way in the nation. Focus on what is happening. All right. Well, let's look at the last part of that prophecy then. It's, and I, I didn't realize that we just talked about the next thing it says. So do not speak from your lips that justice will not come or we've not seen justice or will justice ever be held. Okay, let's go to slide seven. This is January 14th, continuation of the prophetic. The Lord says, look and behold, for there shall come in the earth great tension over the next few months. And you're going to see that we're going to look at a prophecy about Iran. God already said it was going to happen. Do not be moved by diversions. 
For some of this that you will see will be meant to divert the focus off of what I will bring, my justice and my hammer too, says the Lord. And my light that will shine to raise up and bring about an exposing of those who have been bent and who are agents of the enemy and their agendas and their wicked deeds. And they have abused and they have mutilated and touched the innocent, especially the children. So God is saying he has enough. Now look at uh, slide eight. This is really interesting. Then we're going to move on. Okay. Uh, Because I'm trying to just set up what God is saying. Okay. January 14th again. Therefore, watch what will come to light. But do not be distracted by the earth itself. Okay, now, what is he meaning? In other words, events in the earth, I think even the elements. It will be very, very tense for there will be earthquakes. That will increase. And some will say, see, this is the end times. It's the end of all things. And God says, wait a minute. This is my time. I will show my justice. I will establish my righteousness. <laughs> But don't be moved at tensions that shall flare among the nations in the next few months. Okay, you heard it last night. They were prognosticating, oh, if we retaliate, it's going to bring World War III. And my spirit was going, it's just wait, you know, because God was speaking in my heart. And I'm not here to put that person on blast. I'm simply here to say, I was hearing God specifically say to me, there will be a retaliation. But it has to be with wisdom and it has to be with, with strategy and it has to be according to timing. And right now is not it. Okay, there's other ways to deal with what Iran did. Okay, now watch. It says, the, and it says, but do not be moved by tensions that shall flare among the nations in the next few months. And there will be signs in the elements and the earth to look and behold. For they're hiding things upon the very screens of your TV. So God's already saying, the media, mm-hmm. these people that I don't know how. You know, they had that uh, press secretary. They, they, she, you know, did you see that clip where they're talking about, oh, you know, we're all, we've always been about borders and all this. And I thought, how do you, how can you, how can what you planet? live with yourself <laughs> that you literally lie every single day and have to cover the lies? Those that are awake anyway. Um, but God says there's things that they're hiding on the TV screens. But I will come even now to show those who coerce and coerce together an agenda to speak the same thing, to create narratives and to create lies that have deceived some. All right. So let's end this section We're talking about the verdict. The 24 elders, any comments on this real quick before we move on to the next one? Well, just to add to the, All right. the, the faux Biden thing, how many have been paying attention to the whole Lloyd Austin fiasco? Okay. How on earth does the White House and the president not know that the Secretary of Defense has been missing and not in the office? <laughs> okay. So something clearly is this if there's no communication happening between the White really House the and the Anthony, DOD. You can't see the stare in front of him. What do you expect? <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how, you, how the top guy that's in charge of the military is missing. You don't, see, you don't realize he's not at work? Yeah. He missed his out of office email. Like, <laughs> so clearly, somebody else is in charge, right? Okay. <laughs> Anthony, behave yourself. <laughs> We're being watched. <laughs> All right, let's go to section two. But well, right. we can see it in we plain sight. It. I mean, it's yeah. obvious. Hey, don't All right, let's look at the next one. So, this one is the earth's soil is vomiting as God's justice erupts. All right, this is March 1st of 2020, and I watch this. Therefore, watch as this level of increase of the power of my glory is coming and touching the earth. This earth cannot handle it. The forces of darkness cannot handle the level of glory. And there'll be great disruptions, great eruptions of the mountains that'll fill the sky with smoke and ash. Look, for this is a visitation of God once again among the mountains. The soils of the land shall shake and they'll say, why are things shaking? Why are they erupting? And God says, because I'm turning it up now and righteousness and justice have kissed and shall have their place. All right. We're going to look at some of the news headlines, man. There has been a lot that has happened since that prophecy in 2020. Look at this one from December 31st of 2020. This is New Year's Eve again. And God says there shall be an eruption, a great eruption in the earth. But pay attention, a great, great eruption. So he's telling us something is coming. It's not just a natural eruption. This is the earth vomiting. All right, let's go to slide 12. 
Spirit of God says, this is January 14th. He repeats it 14 days later. The earth is vomiting. It is loosening the hole because of the justice that is coming and even touching the very soil underneath the earth as it vomits. You will see things erupt even in the natural and the earth soil will shake and there will be frigid colds as I freeze the attempts of the enemy in the spirit realm that he thinks that he could take over this time. Do you know what happened right after that prophecy? Man, it just... Remember those cold weather? Yeah. yeah. And, and I, was, I, I was talking to God. I was like, I'm done with this. And my word, it turns warm. And I'm not saying that I'm the one that, I'm just saying. I but we don't my, care who it came from. Well, We're no, just I'm, not taking, I'm not taking credit. I'm just telling you my, that was what I was in the face of God about. I want warm weather. Hallelujah. Okay. We're so, in agreement. Now, now watch this scripture because you're like, the earth vomits, Really? Yeah, look at Leviticus 18. And if you really look at this, wait till you hear my message on Sunday. This is, oh, it's going to be powerful. We're going to go back to origins again, and we're going to, we're going to look at some stuff. You, you like that? Okay. We're going to show why the Dallas Cowboys have not been successful. So uh, in the last few years, it's something with the star. I'm just messing with you in Texas. because I'm messing with you, Texas. Calm down, or anybody that likes. All right. Listen, I don't have much to talk about in the Bible. The only time the word Green Bay is used is to cut down. <laughs> yeah, right, it's true. We'll cut down the Green Bay tree. All right, man, we need to pray hard. All right, so look at Leviticus 18, 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. That was abortion. Neither shall they profane the name of God. I am the Lord. Keep reading. And thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It's abomination, homosexuality. And then it goes on. And then it goes on in verse 24, and it tells you what happens when this kind of perversion and stuff is hitting the earth. God says, don't defile yourself. And it literally says, I believe it's in verse 25, that the earth as a result vomits. Yes. Yeah, notice the land itself vomits out her inhabitants. Why? Because of what is being done to the very soil. Okay, and that's what God's talking about. All right, so now let's go back and let's look at this. The earth soil is vomiting. All right, I want to look at uh, slide 13. God says this, this is January 21st. Now we're moving into, what is this like, 10 days ago? Okay. And so uh, I speak from the Father's throne that the verdicts have been decreed from the Trinity of God and the eldership of the court of heaven. And it has come at this time in the earth. And yet I say to you, my people, to not fear for what you will begin to see in the earth. And it's shaking as it begins to vomit at another level. As you see eruptions, disruptions, flood waters rising, why is this happening? Has the earth gone mad? And God says, listen carefully, because the verdict of my justice, of my righteousness, has now touched the earth. The earth is responding because of that which has been sown, not only into its very soil, but among men, but also that which has been sown at the hands of demonic kingdoms and those in spiritual darkness and wickedness. So that's why we're seeing things. Now let's go on to slide 14. Pay attention to what was just in the news. Okay, this prophecy is already starting to manifest. Therefore, this is January 21st, slide 14. There shall be tension that shall arise as it was when Goliath taunted, spoke uh, created tension in the days of Israel that they hid out in tents, both king and those of his command. Yet there was one David who arose, and, and, and I say, do not be moved by what you read. Don't be moved by what you see here, what will be reported, and even what factually shall take place. For Iran shall misbehave and create tension in the earth. A week later, what do you see? Yeah. <laughs> they killed three of our soldiers. Okay. So God's trying to tell us. And let's go on because he's telling us some more things that we need to be prepared for so that you're not wigged out. Slide 15. He says, why is there even yet another thing that shall arise in the Middle Mid East? So he's telling us something else is coming. Among the nations as they shall fight and spatter one with another. As tension shall arise in the Middle East as you see these things begin to unfold. Is this the rest you say? God says, yes, my verdict is resting. Remember we talked about that. But the reason this is happening is because hell fears, fears what their days beholds and what you see and what you will see are my judgments upon principalities and powers, rules of darkness. And it goes on and they shall react to make you think that this is the end of all 
things. So they want you to be fear-mongered. They want you to think yeah, that right. the beast and the Antichrist is going to rise up and, you know, you come home and your husband's electric razor is going on the sink and you can't find him. It's because he forgot to turn it off. He's out in the back watering the garden. So, okay. Now notice what they're going to tell you. That was precious. Okay. It's to make you think. I'm trying, Brenda. It's been two nights, all right? It's the third night. They're, they're trying to make you think that there's not a better day or light at the end of the tunnel. Don't be moved. That's what God is saying. All right. Now let's go to slide 16. And I want you to look at this one. All right, and we're going to look at about eruptions and volcanoes here. We're going to look at some of the headlines. For as much as the tension shall arise because of the level of the fear of your enemies, look beyond. Look beyond it. Greater shall be the celebration. Okay, he's telling you there's a celebration coming. Vindication. The justice that shall arise in the earth. The earth shall bring swift changes to the tyrants of the earth and shall calm war in areas that you have seen it for just a season. Isn't that good news? It is awesome. But it shall be my season to reset the earth and to bring reversals, that I will show the earth who's in charge. And I will cause there to be a great, great reward to those who have stood wounded in the midst of the battle. You shall receive spoil and your children and Praise your generations God. to come. Now, we're going to look at some headlines here in just a moment. I'm going to let these guys have a comment. But I want to say this before we do. So I've had two unique dreams. Um, and I, I kind of hinted on it a little bit, but I was in Pasadena, uh, California back in December. Um, uh, and, and I had a dream that I was, man, I was praying these very strong prayers and I didn't even realize that God was going to have me go down the road of imprecatory prayers. And I was decreeing things out of my, my mouth and I felt somebody was mocking me and I thought, devil, what are you doing? And I turned around and it was Obama. And he was in a weird contorted position behind me, mocking me. And all of a sudden I turned around and I began to speak by the Holy Spirit. I began to decree against many of the things that the enemy was trying to do. And when I started decreeing it and praying, I wasn't praying against him. I was praying against many of the things that were trying to be brought into the earth. And all of a sudden... It was like he, he was busted up in a bunch of pieces. And God said to me, he said, you need to teach the church how to pray. Mm -hmm. And he said, what you see, their agendas are falling yeah. apart and will fail. Yeah. Now, so fast forward a month ago, God talked about rewards. I was in this big room, and I, I think I shared this, and, and the back door opens up, and these guys come in. They bring them up to the front, and they began to read off all of the different things that they have done, and they were reading a, like a verdict. Is that, is that right? Mm -hmm. and, and I was standing there, and then God said, now, Hank, you need to decree what the court of heaven says. And I mean, I was saying things that, you know, God was having me decree over the situation. And all of a sudden, they, they, they grabbed a hold of this administration. And uh, they began to hold them accountable for their actions. And we'll just leave it at that. But a man walked up to me, and he said to me from the side, he, he said, uh, come now, uh, you have an appointment with the king. And I said, you mean Jesus? He said, yes. He's waiting for you in a side room, you and Brenda. I said, and I, 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 said, I made him repeat it. I said, Jesus, the king of kings, wants to meet with me in a side room. He goes, yes, and your wife, Brenda, come now. He's waiting. And I said, why? why? Why does he want to meet with me? He said, because he wants to reward you and others for standing for him and standing for what he has said and for telling the truth. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Thank so... Let's look at the slides, and then I want to open up to the panel, slide 17. I'm going to let you guys handle the, the, the uh, different, uh, what do you call it, headlines of different eruptions and stuff. Anthony, go ahead and take us through, and let's have some comments, and sure. we'll go to the next one. Uh, just a couple of things to, to make note of. The volcano erupts in Iceland. Flowing lava reaches fishing town. This one is interesting because I believe this was actually the second eruption that took place in Iceland. There was one yes. that took place, I think, 
towards the either beginning or middle of December. So this was another volcano that eru uh, erupted. And now the same volcano that erupted back in December is getting ready to erupt again. Yeah. So that's very interesting to take note, all of this happening in that same location. Again, another uh, headline here, Indonesian volcano erupts, what's that, for a second time. So wow. I find it interesting that it's not volcanoes erupting just once, but multiple times over and over in these different regions. If you go to the next uh, couple slides, slide 18, ice volcanoes erupt on beach. And I thought, okay, only God can do that. How does ice <laughs> erupt out of the ground on a beach? Okay, that's very interesting. I've never heard of that before, but apparently that is a thing. And uh, Pastor Hank, this was one of the ones that you had called out, but we have new mud volcanoes discovered in the Caribbean island of Trinidad after small eruption. So apparently volcanoes can erupt ice, mud, and fire. <laughs> Didn't know that. That's very interesting. Wow. wow. Now I heard, I don't know if this is true, but, and maybe you guys know, I heard that some of the mud that was coming up was like, rotten like it was sulfuric it was like literally from the pit of hell i'm not sure yeah, as, as far down as seven miles in the earth and it was yeah. it, it was horrible like i mean it was yeah so i mean it's interesting sounds I mean, like vomit to me, to me. <laughs> vomit and the and the devil getting exposed yeah. i mean yeah. that's what it that's that's, that's how i see it yep okay now let's go on to the next one this is slide 19 this is um some of the things that we saw so 47 states had what they identified as heavy, wet snow at the same time. How many are glad you're seeing that heavy, wet snow? That yes. The remains of it, it is going. Okay. So this was September 14th. So this is that OTH. You need to come this year to opening the heavens in Omaha Council Bluffs. It's September, what is it, Brenda? 14th through the 17th. 14th through the 17th this year. It's going to be fantastic. But look at what God says in September at OTH. Spirit of God says, watch water. How many of you remember Dutch's dream? Okay, watch the water waves, watch water. God says, watch the water, for there is a countering that I'm bringing at the power of my hand. And there will be heavy, heavy, heavy wet snow. And they will say, what is this that has been measured in records? Which the first snow of the year, really, in the United States was this heavy, heavy, heavy wet snow. And that's what they called it, heavy, heavy, heavy wet snow. And they said, we've not seen in our record books, for it's not light snow, it's heavy, heavy wet snow. And there'll be that which shall come by the way of rain, and it shall, be, it shall come in areas that the enemy thought that he could bring drought, and, and he could bring harshness. You, you see what's happening on the West Coast right now? Yes. Okay. But God says, I'll bring a rain that shall come and begin to be watered upon this nation again. Go to slide 20. This one is interesting. So the same night, God calls out Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. <laughs> Of all places, okay, here he's prophesying, and then God shifts, and he starts calling out Atlanta, Georgia, of all the places. And he says, and you will see that this is a sign. You'll see the snow, the wet snow, that I'm bringing more cleansing, deep cleansing that shall go deep this time, and bring corruption to a, to a level and a place you've not seen it. Now, watch, watch. They speak of prison. They speak of jail. He's talking about 45, right? There shall be that which shall be a freeze in you, Atlanta. It shall freeze you in Georgia. So he's saying there's coming a freeze in Atlanta and there's coming a freeze in Georgia. For I'll cause that which you think you'll do to bring about house arrest, to bring about that which you seek to by way of bracelet, ankle bra bracelets. God says, do not make me laugh. Do you know after this prophecy they were talking that way? It's really weird. Right. Um, now, do you know what happened? Look at slide 24 and through 26. On Halloween night of all nights, God sends a freeze into Atlanta. Yeah, of all nights. Yep. Okay. Interesting. You know, Georgia, Atlanta weekend forecast. You know, you can see it right there. Okay. Uh, it, was, it was on Halloween night. That's also Reformation Day. Okay. Let's go, to, um, let's go to slide 21. God says, therefore, I shall cause there to be a freeze and I'll stop your efforts. Okay. We don't need to read the whole prophecy. But look at slide 24 through 26, because God talks about um, this, this uh, freezing. And you can talk about Atlanta, what happened. What is significant, not just with the natural freeze, but God was talking about freezing even in the courts. Okay, tell us what happened in Atlanta, what's been happening in the court. <laughs> well, for those who've been following this, is quite 
it, it feels like a soap opera, actually, that's <laughs> taking place with the Atlanta Fulton County DA and this special prosecutor who turned out to be special, all right. Uh, what, what's her name? We, her name is pronounced Fanny, but I like the name Fanny because of what happened. It's pretty so interesting. Her Fanny in trouble. Her Fanny's in trouble and now. And her Fanny was in the wrong place. She's in the wrong place. So the Atlanta DA had hired this prosecutor to basically uh, press official indictment charges. And so they made this whole hoopla thing. That's my favorite part. Is like they were like parading around saying how that there's, this was going to happen and they're the best at they're going to be the ones that bring Trump down. Well, literally within the last couple weeks, uh, there was bombshell evidence released that Fonny, Fanny Willis, <laughs> and this lead prosecutor had an illicit relationship. And that's one thing, right? But it's the fact that she hired this guy. He was paid $600,000 to press the charges, and then spent some of the money for them to take a trip together. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? yeah. Do you, you realize there's a paper trail, right? <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, you're a pretty, you're a high-ranking public official. You don't think there's gonna be logs on where you go and where you fly? Right. So now, Fanny is in trouble. Her Fanny is in hot water. <laughs> Because those this funds are now, that's, that's a criminal federal case because it's misuse of public funds. Yep. You also have them violating their personal code or conduct as public officials. Yes. And that's a conflict of interest. And she also wrecked that man's home because they just got, he just got a divorce from his wife. So <laughs> if you look in the headlines today, I just saw it. Terry saw it too. Uh, we were just looking at some of the headlines. Newsweek just published this a few hours ago, but they're basically saying that the risk of being thrown out. So it yep. is essentially yep. frozen yep. until yes. February 15 when they have to give that hearing. Correct. Yes. So they right. have to basically now sit in front of all of these people and talk about the terrible things they did behind closed doors. So you but talk when about they touted the themselves off. as being the ones that were going to take Trump out, you know, look how long that's gone on. We had the collusion. We've had a dossier. We've had, yes. and everybody touted themselves as the hero. I mean, if we go back, and it just goes to show you, God is still large and in charge. And yes. so right. that, and that is another reminder to everyone that's watching, everyone that's here, is remember. This, these are the things to make notes of that where we're winning. So don't ever get your eyes off of what God is doing. Anything, it, Terry, go ahead. it reminds me of Senator Bob Menendez because he did the same thing. He was on the House floor talking about how they were going to indict, they were going to get Trump and impeach him and all these things, and he deserved to go to jail. And then come to find out, he was the one that's been smuggling money, gold bars from Egypt. Yes. <laughs> he's been the one colluding with Russia. Right. It's amazing. Right. Well, the devil hangs himself every time. So let's, let's go ahead to slide 36. I know I'm kind of going ahead, but this is, this, we're going to come to, to this subject of 45 in just a second. But I want you to see this because I think it really goes along with what we're talking about with these indictments and the freeze that God said he would bring. And it naturally happened. And it happened again in Atlanta, Georgia. So slide 36 is very revealing. And God says, I'll cause my goodness to pass over this country, United States, and I will bring vindication as I've promised. And those who seek, this is April 16th of 2023, and those who seek to indict shall be indicted themselves. Have you seen that happen now? Yes. <laughs> so this prophecy is coming to pass. And I think we're just getting started too. So. And, and as quickly as things arise, they shall fall apart for they will see it is like feathers that shall fall that have no weight. Mm -hmm. For I will blow upon it, says the living God. Yeah. And then if that's not enough, they will say, now we will look to frame, which came out later. They said, oh, now you're, 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 you're trying to interfere. And that's what this whole Georgia thing is about. God says, go ahead and frame. Frame your accusation. Frame your indictment. But you've left me out of the picture. <laughs> but it shall be you who seek to do this that shall be unveiled. Are you seeing that happen? Come on. Yes. Exposed for the world to see. Yes. Yes. So, sorry, one last thing about yeah. that prosecutor. I forgot to mention, Terry, we found yeah. this. But that prosecutor, uh, I think his name's Nathan Wade. Yes. 
there are logs of him visiting the White House twice yep. in 2022 yep. before the election case hit. I wonder why he was meeting at the White House. It just doesn't Well, but, but, yes. but look at the indictment, okay, that's happening in New York City with that uh, Jean Carroll lady. Okay. First of all, the dressing room is right across from cash registers. Okay. There's no security cameras, right, that captured anything. <laughs> Nobody was there. Nobody knows anything. First it happened in 93, then 94, then 95, and then 96. But I know the dress that I was wearing, and I'm telling you, this is the dress. And she even goes and uh, does a photo op for a magazine cover, right? And they did some research, and the dress wasn't even made in the years that she kept changing. <laughs> and so, but here's what's bad. The judge will not even allow... 45's attorneys to present evidence in court. Then they have Facebook posts that she posted. Uh, I mean, she, she calls her cat her private area. I mean, we, how twisted are you? She called rape in what she's accusing as sexy. Okay, are, lady, are you twisted? Yeah, you are. And, and, Demon and, possessed. And, and the <laughs> fact is, in the United States of America, that you, are, you you're allowed a defense. You're allowed to have an attorney. And yet your attorneys and your defense team cannot present evidence just so they can come and say you have to pay $83 million to a jury that decides these things without hearing the defense. This is crazy stuff. But here's what the deal is. It's all going to fall apart. And and that's what people need to understand. And and I want to say this because, you know, they lie constantly. They, they, it's amazing how many things that they publish and post that they never go back and retract or be held. They want to hold everybody accountable for what you say, but they will not be held accountable for what they lie about in their writings and their reportings. Exactly. Okay. But let me tell you something. There was a, 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 it is a scary thing to kick against the pricks. That's a Bible verse. When Saul who was later called Paul, was killing Christians, persecuting them, and Jesus appeared to Saul, Paul, and knocked him off his high horse and said, you are doing this against me. And at some point, I'm praying that these people are going to understand that you can, you can only get by with so much for so long when it comes to Absolutely. when God decides to insert himself. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't want to be on the side where he has to deal with you according to his righteousness and justice. Powerful. Okay, so let's be reminded of that. All right, here's another one, slide 27. We're going to move on, and I want to move quickly because I want to get to 45 for those that might wonder what's going on too. Um, This is uh, January 22nd, 2023, and God says this, slide 27. So we're talking about unsealing, you know, things in the deep places. And I'll just read the red part. But God says, there are, in fact, things hidden that's coming to light. Investigations, evidence, things that they thought were concealed. In this moment, I have pulled the curtain. So this has been a year ago. I've pulled back the covers. There are things that shall be seen and known. Okay, since that prophecy alone, look at all the things that's happened. April 16th, slide 28. Look at this one. Um, I'm just going to kind of go in the middle of it. It says, do not be afraid because a veil and a curtain of those who have done evil and brought an agenda to deceive. They will be brought to another level of exposure now. <clears throat> Pay attention to resignations, removals, and they'll never, no longer be able to serve in their offices. Man, that happened at one point. We, were, we did a prophetic pulse, and we couldn't believe all the resignations that were happening yeah, from right. leaders around yeah. the world. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, let's go to slide 29. God says... This is uh, New Year's Eve, and it shall be known as the time of unsealing things in deep places, hidden places. Some have gone on, and they are no more, but their names, their names will be brought to a place of guilt. And there are those who are alive who are trembling at this time because they know who they are, and they know what they've done. Then God says this in slide 30, much will be done in the first five months of your year to spin it out of control. To bring confusion, to bring lies, to convince men even that they're sick, to convince men that hostility is the way. So this is uh, Anthony, whoever, Matt, let's talk about this and then we're going to move into 
Well, I just find it interesting that on the December 31st prophecy that you just read, Pastor Hank, it was talking about things being unsealed, and the very first major news headline that hit in 2024 was Jeffrey Epstein's court documents being unsealed. Yeah. So I think that just kind of set the precedent for the kind of year that we're going to have. Right. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Wow. This is, oh, That's man. interesting. Okay, anybody else? Matt? Uh, uh, Terry? No, the only thing I want to say, too, just in the unsealing, is the unsealing of that, the other thing, the other headline we had there was the unsealing of that divorce papers with uh, Bonnie Willis mm -hmm. and, and the way coming to light as well. And then also the unsealing of that recording that came out in Arizona. Wow. Yeah. Was uh, so that was a really interesting I thing that came from that. the deep. That was really <laughs> interesting, though, to yes. watch. And the that next day, he resigned. Yeah. And yep. Your sin will find you out. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next section. Look at this slide 32. All right. This is 2017. All right. December 6, 2017. Are you enjoying tonight so far? Okay. God says, I've set my trump card to trump the enemy. But now this day, listen to the word of the Lord. This day marks a shift from Donald Trump to Donald Triumph, says the Spirit of God. For it marks a season now where the enemies who've tried to take him out to resist and to cause trouble, there shall come against them one victory after victory after victory as things begin to shift now for this president, for this administration, and for you, my people. So God was already saying it's set in motion. Okay? Now, I want you to look at slide 34. This is an interesting prophecy because we're seeing 45 flying his plane. We talked about this prophecy and other uh, prophetic pulse. And uh, you can talk, uh, you can see many of the prophecies that have already happened. I mean, in fact, the day that Trump announced that he was going to run, there was a missile strike. Remember that mysteriously landed in Poland, which Poland means the land of rest. Interesting. So watch this. It says there'll be close calls and they would say of jets that will come to the very outer edges of your airspace. There'll be missile tests that'll fill the air. That happened right after this prophecy, too. And there will be even one missile. Notice they didn't say a missile. One missile that shall cause men to fear and say, where shall this land? They didn't know. And what shall be the damage thereof? And God says, as the king of the air, I'll strike it down. That's what you saw happen. And then notice the prophecy shifts, changes subjects, so you think. And then they'll say, what is this? 45 is flying his plane again. What does this mean? We must stop him. We must raise up further attempts that he may never be seated again. That's what all these indictments are That's about. All it is. So they shall say, but as the king of the air, I shall strike down their efforts and he shall fly freely, proclaiming my agenda for this nation to rise up again. That was October 23rd. He announced his presidency candidacy just a few weeks later. Yes. And it was the very day that that one missile that this prophecy said would happen. Okay, how many are getting it? All right, look at slide 35. Therefore, do not be filled with fear when it looks like there is war. or to uh, So don't fear when it looks like it. Or attempts to stop my agenda with 45. Look to the elements. They're going to speak loudly. Have they not? Oh, yes, they yes, have. Yes. Of my redemptive plans as a living God, for these signs of the natural shall be signs of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is upon this nation. All right, look at slide 36. This is, okay, we already looked at that one about the indictments. They'll be indicted. Right. And then I think what we'll do is, let's just look at this thing about triumph. Okay, let's go to, um, let's look at uh, uh, slide, what is it? It would be, um, well, no, let's go to slide 41A before we go to the news headlines about triumph. This is important that you understand this prophecy. We got hate mail because God would not be quiet about Netanyahu. And after he was, you know, uh, being indicted, they were trying to throw him in jail, said he'd never run again. They had all those different elections. And God kept saying, you can have as many elections as you want. Remember? Mm -hmm. And people were like, what does that mean, many elections? Well, we saw it. They had, what, five or whatever it was. <laughs> and, and, and God was very determined on what he said. And it's so interesting in this prophecy that he links somebody else in it too. Okay, let's look here. This is May 23rd of 2021. God says, I'm putting my hand even stronger upon two men in the earth. You will see it and there is a celebration that's happening right now in the spirit realm. Because again, things in the spirit, this is the problem. We don't, we don't get God's perspective. 
Their voice shall become louder. Their position shall be granted and given and shall be stronger. I speak, who does the first person God speaks of? Yeah. Netanyahu. Did that just happen? Yes. And I speak of Donald Trump, says the living God. Here's the thing. Let me just say this. I, I was meeting with a political figure recently. And I said to them, I said, here's what we have to understand. You cannot look at things just politically. You have to look at and have an understanding that there are really only two kingdoms. The kingdoms of God, kingdom of God, and the kingdoms of darkness that infiltrate and affect politics. True. And if you cannot understand the spirit world and how they operate and what they're doing in our politics across this nation, the earth, you will be a rhino. Right. You'll be a, a leftist wingnut. Right? Okay? You won't understand. Okay? And then I said, the second thing is, if you don't understand the culture and how the kingdom of God affects the culture and how the enemy is trying to affect the culture, you cannot then fully understand your role as a person in politics. Okay? True. True. It's, it's not about all of your made up rules and stuff. You have to understand morals. You have to understand what God says about it. And you have to understand what the culture is doing to defy those morals yes. and standards. Or you won't be a great leader. And the third thing you have to understand is what God has said. If you don't understand what God has said and you don't have a track record and an understanding prophetically of what God says, this is why, you know, people write and they say, well, you're just worshiping, you know, 45. No, I have since 9-11 a prophecies and it goes on 2004, 6, 7, 10, 12. I mean, 14, it goes on all the way to 16 where God said, I'll raise up someone from New York yes. who will bring this country back on course and he will be born and raised yep. there. Well, I wonder who could that be, okay, to, to the point where the opposite kingdom, Hillary, goes and sets up Tower 45 for the 45th presidency. Wow, why did she do that? That's a different story. So when I read these prophecies here, all this is is a continuation of a story. It has nothing to do with, you know, you're just a you know, Christian nationalist, you're, you're Donald Trump. I, no. I'm a man after the heart of God, and I'm staying with what he has said. That's right. And then these trolls, you know, these trolls show up. Don't believe this prophet or that prophet because their prophecies don't come to pass. Well, I can't speak for other prophets, but I can tell you this ministry, we, we put it out here pretty much every six weeks to show you that prophecies are coming to pass. So they need to pull their head out of their donkey backside, their rhino buttocks or whatever else, and, and get a clue. All right, let's go on. So God says, I speak of Donald Trump. So anyway. Say it plain. Look at the headline. No, I, look at 40. And I'll talk about that. Why? Why do I speak the way I speak and others? Because you have to understand there's, there's a certain thing that God does when he's trying to counter something. He raises up an anointing. You know what kind of anointing it is? Malachi 4, it's, it's an anointing of the spirit of Elijah. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm him, so don't even say that. I'm saying it's an anointing, and that anointing is one that deals with injustice. It deals with, with things that are going on contrary to what God wants. All right, look at these. Uh, can somebody go over the headlines, and then we're going to shift gears about Texas. Yeah, no, this was huge here because, again, Pastor, you're talking about all the different things that they've been trying to throw at Trump. And then here we go. We start to get into election season here. And we have Trump's triumphs here in New Hampshire and in Iowa. I don't know if we got one for Iowa or not, but that's okay. But he actually in Iowa was historic because of the margin of victory. They hadn't seen that since Reagan. Wow. Like, that was amazing. So just the margin of victory that he won in Iowa, and then the fact that, again, he won handedly in New Hampshire is showing the triumph that is coming to him, and the fact that no matter what they try to throw him, all the indictments, I even read an article or was talking about, they keep, they're like, these indictments just aren't stopping him. It seems to be doing the opposite. <laughs> well, and, and I saw one person that said, I forgot where I saw this, but they said, this really, Americans are getting very bold with their vote now, and this is like a protest vote. It's literally people's way of protesting what happened in 2020. This is how our voice is being heard, and people are coming out in mass yes. to make their voice heard and bring justice to what happened. Yeah, which is what we need that. We need yes. that. All right, Matt, don't you have a video? 
Oh, yeah. So, Why don't actually, you show your video? So, I was uh, paying attention to a couple things um, the other day, and I saw something come down on my timeline the other day, and I said, wait a second, what did he just say? And I had to watch it like two or three times. Um, but the uh, fake administration happened to say something, and why don't we go ahead and roll the video, and then uh, I'll make a comment. That American consumers are facing real confidence in their economy we're building. Let me tell you who else is noticing that. Donald Trump. <laughs> Did you see what he recently said about that he wants to, the, he wants to see the economy crash this year? A sitting president. Is he saying like a dress me? Oh, oh, so wait a second. <laughs> The one time he can somewhat put a sentence together, he dooms himself. Somebody should have cut his mic. Right? America. I mean, I'm He's shocked. He's just saying what we all know. I mean, he struggled for a second to even put a sentence together there. But then when he finally did, I mean, look what he said. Sitting president. Verbatim, that came out of his mouth. That's awesome.